Well, third time's the charm. After the disastrous movie-going double feature night Thursday, I was so happy to discover that Godzilla Minus One was an absolute blast. It was so much fun. I honestly would not mind adding this movie to my library. That's how much I enjoyed it. Why is it that so many foreign language movies have been better written and so much more enjoyable than a lot of American films slash Hollywood films that I've been watching? It's really frustrating. So, all right, I got a lot of pros, a few cons, not many. I'll try to be succinct but you know how it is with me. The premise of this movie is it's, it takes place in the final days or it starts off in the final days of World War II. It focuses around this kamikaze slash not a kamikaze pilot because he's still alive. And he is really, he's got, seems to have some PTSD, a lot of survivor's guilt. He feels like he hasn't really fulfilled his duty. He's been a failure. He's tired of the war. He doesn't want to die. And he has his first experience or exposure to Godzilla. Then after that, time passes and Godzilla doesn't show back up again until a couple of years later. I believe it's the movie opens in 1945 and then the bulk of the story takes place in 1947, I think. It shows the passage of time, things happening in 46, but I think I believe that Godzilla doesn't show back up again until a couple of years later. By then he's much bigger. Some things that I liked right away, I enjoyed the storytelling. I felt like it was quite solid, despite the fact that this is a kaiju movie, big, huge monsters and whatever, and they can get a little bit ridiculous. The human element of this story for me was what really grounded it and made it something that was very enjoyable. I sincerely cared about these characters, especially the two main characters, the guy and the girl that he encounters in post-war Tokyo. And the friendship that they strike up and, and as they get to care for each other throughout the course of the movie. And there's there's things that happen in between all of that, we, you know, throughout the course of the story. I won't get into specific details because I'd like you guys to just go into it and not knowing a ton about it. I really liked how that played out. I liked all the different characters that it showed. There was really no main antagonist as far as a human goes. The antagonist in this movie is Godzilla. He's the baddie. I mean, he's actually, I'm, well, okay. He's just, a, he's just an animal, right? He's just kind of rampaging his way through. It, he's not like a human antagonist. He's just this creature, okay? And so in a sense, it's like, well, you know, he's just doing what he does and there's that, but he's still killing a lot of people. And so he needs to be dealt with. Something else that I really liked about this was the color palette. I really, there was something very visually pleasing to me about the warmth of the colors and just the contrast between the different colors on the screen. There was, it just soothed me despite the story that was going on. It was just something I found very visually pleasing. I wrote it down. That was one of the first things I wrote down. After my first note, which was final days World War II, I wrote down like the color palette. I liked the story setup, like I said, the characters. I liked how they delved a bit into the human trauma of war and the struggles that this main character had has. He, he just, it's, it's a constant thing for him throughout the whole movie. At one point he made some sort, or he or somebody else, maybe it was him, made some sort of comment about how that he's still fighting the war or something like that. And he's, I, by that he's referring to his internal struggle. Also, I liked some of the other messaging in here. There's a point where the townspeople or the, the people in the area where he's been attacking or he's threatening to attack Tokyo. There's like another town close to Tokyo, I think. I can't remember the name of it. It starts with a G and uh, he attacks that place and then they know, okay, he's going to come to Tokyo at some point. And there's a moment where there's a, a group of people talking and I think it's a military guy. He makes some sort of comment about war and how the, you know, how awful the war was and how little they valued life during the war. 
And he talks about, you know, the expectation that the, these kamikazes are going to kill themselves and suicide people and we're going to kill and kill. Like the, the point, you know, being made that, look, it's time for us to value life a little bit more than we have been doing. And I, I, I appreciated that. I, I thought that was very positive messaging and um, something that I, I definitely noticed. Another thing that I really liked was just Godzilla himself. You guys, he was fierce and he was scary and gnarly looking and he he was wicked, like his face, the way they constructed him. I don't know if there were any moments where they were using a practical uh, creature or if it was all CGI, but whatever they did, I felt like it was very well done and he was formidable and yes, he does grow. Now, I don't know a crap ton about Godzilla. I just know the basics. I know he's got this radiation thing, whatever nuclear thing that powers up in him and then he blasts out this radiation ray and I know that he can get larger over time and all of that but the character design for this creature or the creature design was just impressive and he looked mean <laughs> And there's a scene where there's stuff going on with him in the water. Like there's this water chasey type of scene with him. And I thought that was shot really, really well. And also you, you do get the sense. I know I mentioned that he's just the creature doing what a creature does. But there are points or there was one specific point where honestly it felt like he was toying with them. Maybe you'll know what I'm talking about when you when you get to that part. But I specifically wrote it down toying with them right below water chase. Also, just the effects in general, the the, the bombing and, and the action scenes and the, the airplane scenes. At one point, the characters in an airplane and the maneuvering scenes of the camera. And as he's, you know, circling around Godzilla and Godzilla is trying to get him. I just it was so good. It was so much fun. And at the end of this movie, you guys, there was applause legit applause and there were several people talking excitedly about it when it was done that's how much the audience enjoyed it it wasn't a packed theater but there was a lot of seats that were filled and there was a lot of excitement about this film i just couldn't help but notice how energetically people were talking about it when it was done and i like that i i genuinely love it when a movie is so good and so enjoyable that the audience has spontaneous applause or they are talking about it excitedly. You know, at one point after everyone had emptied the theater and I went out and the people that had been talking amongst themselves, they were outside clustered in a group and they were still talking about it. And I, I just thought that was really cool. And it was a wonderful time at the theater. I don't have many complaints at all. I wanted to touch a, a little bit again on the elements uh, dealing with this guy's trauma and how they handled what seems to be, you know, elements of PTSD or survivor's guilt, stuff like that. There's a moment where he's having a bit of a breakdown and I felt like that scene was really really touching his friend is there and she's trying to comfort him and he does say at one point something about am I even alive is this am I dead already or is this just a dream am I even really here am I alive and she's trying to comfort him and he's just losing it and I thought that was handled really well that was very touching and it really gave you a sense for how much he was suffering you know I guess I could have mentioned this earlier when I touched on that but I just just notice the notes. I look at the notes and I talk to you and then sometimes I lose my place. But um, there were moments in here where I'm, I'm going to start sliding into the cons. And this part re really isn't a con, what I'm getting ready to say. It's just an observation. So there were moments in here where... <sighs> Okay, so obviously there are cultural differences between Americans and Japanese people. Not just culture in itself, but just the way we hold ourselves, the way we carry ourselves, our body language. Also in places like, let's say, India, you know, where they have the, the way they move their heads and that expresses their emotion, which is not something that we... I mean, we do have body language to express our emotion, but there are certain specific cultural differences between various areas in in the in the world. You know, like I said, the the Indians, the way they 
hold their body, the way they posture when they're talking to convey their emotion. Japan, very similarly, they have very different sort of mannerisms and, and ways to express themselves that's quite different from the way we are here in the United States. So to some people, and, and admittedly to me, it looks a little funny and different, you know, but there was there were moments where the, the way the characters were acting, and honestly, I don't know how much of this is just maybe a representation of the acting or just Japanese people in general, but there were moments where certain things would be happening and the way the actor was portraying his emotion or whether in his body language or the uh, vocal sounds he was making. Some people were kind of laughing at it. You know, they thought it they thought it was it wasn't a funny moment, but they were laughing at it. That's not a con. It's just an observation. It was so much that I did notice that I wrote it down some audience laughter at the cultural differences. That's the only thing that I can think to explain why this laughter was happening. Just that, you know, this is a Japanese movie. It's in Japanese. So you're definitely going to, if you haven't ever seen a Japanese movie before, which I'd be surprised if you haven't, but let's say if you haven't, you will pick up on different things like that. Anyway, whatever. That's a non-issue. That was just something that I noticed. Okay, now delving into the cons. I wrote only three cons down. One, there's a moment where the guy's friend who's staying with him, she is in this other city and she's in a bad situation. And he somehow, in the midst of all this chaos and all of the people, he somehow manages to just find her right there. There she is. He finds her. That felt a little bit too convenient, you know, very obvious plot convenient thing happening there. I wrote that under the con category. Also, there's another scene where there are two characters. They're standing beside like an alleyway sort of thing. And this imminent danger is approaching and a character pushes the other one out of the way into the alley into safety. And then, of course, you know, like sacrifices themselves or whatever. And that was kind of hmm, that didn't sit well because this person could have had time to just for them both to go into the alley. So obviously that was setting up this big dramatic moment, but it didn't land with me. I think in the way that it was intended, that felt like a, okay, well that was just a convenient, dramatic, emotional plot moment there. And I was like, nah. And then there was another one where the character is trying to find somebody. So he's sending out this, these batches of um, letters to try to locate this person. And well, wouldn't you know it, that mail service was super, super quick. Feels like it, you know, a result came about within just a matter of days, probably, because they had a very small amount of days in this particular portion of the movie. I wrote down quick mail service. <laughs> Because in post-war Japan, they're still trying to reconstruct and it really didn't seem to me like the letters would have gotten to where he intended for them to go in the short amount of time that it happened. So it's minor. It's not that big of a deal. It, it does not affect my enjoyment of this movie because other than those very like tiny things, this movie was quite solid. The writing was really good. It just fit together well. I felt like the pacing was fine. It was a bit over two hours long. Obviously with credits, it's going to be a little less, but so let's say about a two hour long movie. And I wasn't bored and I felt like the pacing was just right. We didn't have too much of Godzilla. I don't like it when it's too much of the creatures. Maybe some people would complain about that, but not me. I like more the human story. I like the addition, the, the excitement of the creature and the danger, but my appreciation is mostly with the human story, the human characters. And while this movie starts off quickly, th there's not a lot of time from the opening scene where you're introduced to the main character to where Godzilla Godzilla shows up for the first time. That happens pretty quickly. That's a good hook. It gets you pulled right in. And then you go into the character exploration and development and introductions of all the other characters that are going to be part of the story or further introductions of different characters because some of the characters in the opening scene, they remain through the story and time is going by and it's it's well into i wrote down it's an hour before he attacks the land so you have a good solid hour of character development and building up to this moment and then he shows up again a couple years later and he attacks the land now i thought that the rest of the movie was going to be that it was just going to be him attacking the land and that last hour was going to be the survival no 
there was other stuff that was going on after that happened. I really liked how they did that. I have honestly no complaints about that. And so, yeah, I was very impressed with this movie and so happy to finally have had a good movie going experience this week. Well, no, 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 that's being unfair. I had an excellent movie going experience on Monday when I saw American Fiction at the Regal Mystery Movie Monday thing. That was so good too. So I, okay, it's a bit harsh to say what I said just before this. I had two duds last night, but they've been bookended by an excellent start and an excellent finish. And that makes me happy. And so I think that's all I have to say about this. If you guys haven't seen this yet and you like this sort of thing, please go check it out. It's great to watch on the big screen. This is one of those movies where it's so much fun to see on a big screen. You'll appreciate the cinematography so much more. You'll appreciate just looking at the monster. I mean, he would just, just the way he held his body. It was so cool. He was cool, even though he was terrible and scary. He was still cool. So uh, yeah, that's all I have to say about Godzilla minus one. Oh, I do not understand what the minus one means. I feel like I need to look this up because I was thinking to myself, what does this mean? <laughs> Somebody enlighten me, please. Um, in the meantime, I'll try to remember to look it up and see if that, ha what is this about? Does it tie into stuff from Godzilla lore from, I, I don't know. Anyway, that's it. I'm wrapping this up now, you guys. And we'll see you in the next video. Hasta luego. Mm -hmm.